This is Euler's number, and it equals 2.71828 and goes on forever. This raises the question, what is E, and why is it equal to 2.71828 and so on? The most common definition of E involves the idea of compound interest, and we'll be looking at the original scenario that E was first introduced. Suppose there is $1 in a bank account that pays interest at the rate of 100% per annum, compounded quarterly per year. Then at the end of one year, how much money will be in our account? Well, here we can use the compound interest formula, which we will consider as assumed knowledge in this video. So the principal amount is $1, interest rate per annum is 100%, which we can rewrite as 1.00 in decimal form. N equals 4, since we are compounding quarterly, which means compounding 4 times per year. And T equals 1, since we want to find the final account balance at the end of one year. And this gives us $2.44. That means, at the end of one year, our account would have grown from $1 to $2.44. But what if interest was compounded not quarterly, but instead monthly? Well, before we continue, let's take a closer look at the scenario. We need to distinguish between constants and variables. The constants in this scenario are things that do not change. And these are principal amount, which is $1, the annual interest rate, which is 100% per annum, and the time period, which is one year. Whereas the variables are the things that do change. The only variable in this scenario is n, which represents the number of times interest is compounded per year. So for this scenario, we can simplify this compound interest formula to this, and all we have to do now is plug in different values of n. Going back to our question, what if interest was compounded monthly? Well, if interest was compounded monthly, that means interest is being compounded 12 times per year. Therefore, n equals 12. Then at the end of one year, our final account balance will be $2.61. Now let's just add into this table what we found previously. When n equals 4, a equals $2.44. Now let's ask another question. What if interest was compounded daily? Well, if interest was compounded daily, that means interest is compounded 365 times per year. Therefore, n equals 365, and a equals $2.715. There are two important observations we should make at this point in the scenario. The first of these is that as n increases, a also increases. That means the more times interest is compounded each year, the larger the final account balance. And keep in mind that the final account balance is made up of the $1 principal amount plus interest. So in other words, the more times interest is compounded each year, the more interest we would be earning. The second observation we should make is that as n gets bigger and bigger, the final account balance increases, but increases by not as much each time. This pattern becomes incredibly obvious when the values of n get really large, like these ones. We can see that although the values of n increased dramatically, the final account balance also increased, however by very, very little. As we can see here, the more times we compound our interest within a year, the larger our bank account balance can grow. But there is a limit to this growth. Our bank account balance will end up approaching a maximum value, and this value is Euler's number. Therefore we can say that as n approaches infinity, a approaches e. And already at n equals 1 billion, the value of a looks incredibly similar to Euler's number. Except it's not quite exactly equal to Euler's number. And this is the definition of Euler's number. It is the maximum final amount of money that can be yielded at the end of one year from an investment of $1 into a bank account that pays interest at a rate of 100% per annum compounded infinitely many times within one year. Mathematically, we say that E equals the limit of 1 plus 1 over N raised to the power of N as N approaches infinity. If this is the definition of Euler's number, then what if the interest rate is not 100%? And what if we wanted to calculate the maximum final account balance at the end of not one year, but multiple years, or the principal account balance was not $1, 
Can we still use Euler's number? The answer is, of course. Euler's number is inextricably tied with the idea of compound interest. Suppose we have a principal account balance of P dollars, and we are paid interest at the rate of R per annum, where R is in decimal form. So if the interest rate is 50% per annum, R equals 0.5, and it is compounded N times per year, then at the end of T years, this is the final account balance. And yep, this is the compound interest formula. To find the maximum final account balance that is possible, we need to evaluate the limit as n approaches infinity, which indicates that interest is compounded infinitely many times each year. What we are trying to do now is see if we can simplify this equation using the definition of Euler's number. And to do this, we'll be using properties of limits. Given that the limit of a constant times a function is equivalent to the constant times the limit of the function, we can simplify this equation by first factorizing out p. We have to understand that to be able to use the definition of Euler's number to simplify this equation, this equation has to have things that are common to the definition of Euler's number. How do we do this? Well, we can see that the numerator here is 1, therefore we would want our equation to also have 1 on the numerator. Therefore we can divide the numerator and denominator by r, and now we have 1 on the numerator as required. Next, another observation we can make is that what appears in the denominator also appears in the exponent. And of course, we would want our equation to also have this property, so we can express our exponent like so. And therefore, what appears in the denominator also appears in the exponent as required. Now we use another property of limits. Given that the limit of a function raised to an exponent is equivalent to the limit raised to the exponent, we can take out the exponent rt, and now the limit is raised to this exponent. If we take a look at Euler's number, we are evaluating the limit as n approaches infinity, which means this value is approaching infinity, and this value is also approaching infinity. Now let's look at our equation. Because of the fact that when n approaches infinity, n over r also approaches infinity, that means we can say that as n approaches infinity, this value approaches infinity, and this value also approaches infinity. And this is the definition of Euler's number. If we wanted to make things a little bit clearer, we could introduce a new variable, let's say x. So this can be simplified to limit of 1 plus 1 over x raised to the power of x as x approaches infinity. These two equations are equivalent even though the variables are different, because both equations are telling us that when we evaluate the limit, the denominator approaches infinity and the exponent also approaches infinity, which is the definition of Euler's number. Therefore, the maximum final account balance is given by p times e raised to the power of r times t. Therefore, these two formulae are equivalent, and they give us the maximum possible final account balance that can be yielded at the end of t years from an investment of p dollars into a bank account that pays interest at a rate of r per annum, compounded infinitely many times each year. We can verify whether these two formulae are equivalent by using an example. Suppose there is $2,000 in a bank account that pays interest at the rate of 15% per annum, then, at the end of 10 years, what is the maximum possible final account balance? First, let's write down the key values. P equals $2,000, R equals 0.15 because we write R in decimal form, and T equals 10 years. If we substitute the values into the first formula, we get this. And substituting the values into the second formula, we get this. Using a calculator, we would find that both formulae give us $8,963.38. And therefore we have verified that both formulae work and give us the same answer.